This is breaking news from KETV News Watch 7 and KETV.com. I'm John Oki. Omaha Mayor Gene Stothard and other city leaders just beginning a news conference to let us know how the city will respond to the COVID-19 virus. As of now, only cases here involve people who traveled and returned to the city. Let's listen in, in to the mayor. We have lots of people in here today uh, because we are all impacted by coronavirus or COVID-19. We are diligently working with Douglas County and our health care partners to protect public health and public safety. We are working together to lower the risk and reduce the impact on our community. This is a rapidly changing situation which requires action, flexibility, and thorough, accurate information. These are our priorities as we develop and update plans to protect our citizens, our employees, and to continue city and county operations and services. We have a lot to cover this morning. Police Chief Todd Schmatter and Chief Dan Olson, Fire Chief Dan Olson, will provide information on how the police and fire departments are responding. Douglas County Board Chairman Claire Duda will update county plans and actions. I will go over city operational plans. Carol Allensworth is here today representing uh, Dr. Adi Poor, and she is the Division Chief for Epidemiology and Preparedness for Douglas County, and she will provide the most recent update from the Douglas County Health Department. We also have many others in the room today that can answer your questions. We have City Attorney Paul Kratz, HR Director Deb Sander, uh, IT Coordinator Bobby Wernley, Douglas County Chief Administrative Officer Patrick Bloomingdale, Emergency Manager Paul Johnson, 911 Director Kathy Allen, uh, Treasurer John Ewing, Election Commissioner Brian Cruz, Corrections Director Mike Meyer, Paul Cohen, who is our Building Administrator, Sheriff Captain Wayne Hudson, and MECA President Roger Dixon. We're all here today to answer your questions. So first, let's start with Carol Allensworth for the latest update. Um, the health department is also leading the unified command that met for the first time yesterday to coordinate the response. So now I'll have Carol speak. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carol Allensworth, as she said, and I just wanted to give you a situation update. As of 9 o'clock this morning, globally we've seen 121,000 cases of COVID-19 with over 4,300 deaths. In the United States, as of this morning, there were 1,039 cases of COVID-19 in the United States with 25 deaths. In Douglas County, here locally, we have had four cases, and that includes the case that was um, reported just yesterday afternoon. The latest case was a woman in her 40s who had traveled to California and Nevada. Her household and very close contacts are at home in self-quarantine at this time. The investigation is ongoing to determine if anybody else or what other exposures might have occurred in this community. The health department during the course of this response has worked with over 500 individuals. And among those, we have 298 individuals who are in home quarantine and another 44 that are being actively monitored to touch base on their temperature and symptoms every day. We also are running a coronavirus information line. We have received 385 calls on that line since Monday. A lot of those have been general public questions. We're doing our, you know, best to make sure that we keep our public informed. I also want to say that the medical providers in our community are working hand in hand with public health. We um, are very fortunate to have such strong health systems within our community and they're all a part of what is known as the Omaha Healthcare Coalition which works very closely with the health department. They each have developed several COVID-19 resources for the public. They also have hotlines, websites, and phone screening options available. They would like me to bring this message to the public that emergency departments are for those with serious health conditions only, 
not just a minor case of the sniffles, for those individuals who believe that they have been exposed to coronavirus and are experiencing symptoms, they should be contacting one of the health system hotline numbers or their own healthcare provider to discuss the next steps. We want to make sure that people don't just show up at a medical facility, which will help us to minimize the spread to others in this community. And so I think, again, we're talking about what are those major messages for coronavirus. If you're sick, stay home, cover your cough, cover your sniffles, um, disinfect frequently, touch surfaces, stay, stay away from others who are sick. And I think the key, one of the keyest messages, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands and do that for a minimum time of 20 seconds. Thank you very much. I signed an executive order last Friday, March 6th, that requires all departments to update their existing continuity of operation plan to protect the city's workforce and also to help avoid interruptions to services in the event of widespread illness. Preparing and protecting our workforce will help avoid uh, interruption to services. Our directors have identified critical services and personnel that will be needed to maintain operations in each of our city departments. We also have established procedures and we do have the network capacity so that all city employees could work from home if necessary. We are prepared so that city government can continue. Chief Olson and Chief Schmatter have notified their departments this morning of actions that will protect the officers, the firefighters, and the citizens. I will now ask the two chiefs to come forward. First, Chief Schmatter. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to reiterate a simple procedure of washing your hands. The reason I do that is it's a very simple procedure that can mitigate the spread of COVID-19 but it also puts this in perspective. It's my way of saying, wash your hands, let's remain calm. The safety of all Omaha police employees is a top priority and as a department whose mission is critical to the safety of our community, the Omaha Police Department must take measures to preserve and protect our workforce. Out of an abundance of caution effective today, all travel and outside <coughs> training is hereby suspended until further notice within the Omaha Police Department. Our volunteer program is being temporarily suspended as many of our volunteers are 70 plus and in the vulnerable to this virus. The department has pre-ordered extra allotment of personal protective equipment for the officers to respond to the COVID-19 virus when we come in contact with it, to be prepared for preventative measures and we ordered with the presumption that this could last a while. We have been in contact with 911 communications to triage priority calls in the event of more aggressive protection and preservations of our resources as needed. What I mean by that is there are two top priorities. There's priority one calls and priority two calls. Always will receive an immediate police response. Priority threes and fours, accidents that are movable, report calls, at our discretion, if the time mandates it, we can dispose of those calls or reroute them somewhere else. At this time, there has been no modification to our 911 response to calls. We are also looking to hire extra cleaning personnel to double up on all the facilities in our cleaning within our workstations. And should it be necessary, each deputy chief has identified personnel that can work from home, not your uniform responders perhaps detectives and support staff, in the event we need to go that route. As of this time, nobody is allowed to work from home. So let me end by saying simple handshaking or simple handshaking, try to avoid, wash your hands. These are a couple simple measures to mitigate the spread of COVID. I like to use it because it tends to bring calm. It puts things in our control. Wash your hands, social distancing, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. Good morning. The Omaha Fire Department has been working diligently to prepare for COVID-19. We are working with federal, state, county, and city officials. We also collaborate with healthcare experts from the CDC, Douglas County Health Department, and UNMC. I want to thank Mayor Sother for her strong leadership and assistance with our preparation. The Omaha Fire Department is in the healthcare business and has many years of experience treating and transporting patients suffering from serious ailments. Most importantly, we have practical experience transporting Ebola and now COVID-19 patients. On June 11, 2015, the Omaha Fire Department assisted with our city's first Ebola patient. Since that time, our department has participated in the transport of patients suffering from COVID-19. I am confident that the Omaha Fire Department is in a good position to serve our community in a safe and efficient manner. In terms of our department's preparation for COVID-19, our top priority is the safety and well-being of our firefighters and the safety and well-being of our citizens. Our training, our experience, our policies and protocols put us in a very good position to keep our members safe and well, while also allowing us to serve our community appropriately. At this time, the Omaha Fire Department's response protocol has not changed. If COVID-19 becomes a more widespread spread issue in our community, we are prepared to collaborate and evaluate. The CDC is recommending that suspected patients shelter at home. If emergency calls are received at Douglas County 911, a screening process will take place and fire department members will be advised to the nature of the call. The nature of the call will dictate the level of personal protective equipment that will, be, that will be done by firefighters, and we will be following CDC recommendations for this. To break it down, personal protective equipment for low-risk patients will be gloves, goggles, and masks. To break it down even further, protection for high-risk patients will be gloves, goggles, masks, and gowns. If the patient's condition warrants transport to the hospital, fire department personnel will follow protocol. Post-incident protocol mandates decontamination of our medic units, our equipment, our firefighters' uniforms, and firefighters themselves. This is based on the level of suspected contamination. We have protocols in place for reporting significant incidents, accidents, injuries, and exposures. If a firefighter experiences signs and symptoms and has transported a positive COVID-19 patient or a suspected COVID-19 patient, the following steps will be taken. The Omaha Fire Department's medical director, Dr. Rob Chaplin, will speak, will speak directly to the firefighter. Dr. Chaplin then will communicate with doctors from the biocontainment unit at UNMC. Together, the doctors will make the decision of whether or not to test the firefighter based on the risk, risk exposure and the severity of the firefighter's symptoms. If COVID-19 becomes more widespread in our community, that plan will be reevaluated. In terms of our equipment, we do have a cache of personal protective equipment, but please understand this is equipment that we have on hand on a daily basis and that we use in the field on a daily basis. In terms of our information flow, we have relayed to our members that they can continue to expect a steady flow of information in the form of fire chief's directives, chain of command directives, safety memos, general orders, and policy and protocol broadcasts. In terms of the media, I would ask that all media requests be directed to the fire chief's office through our public information officer. Thank you. Like the city of Omaha, Douglas County is also prepared. I'd like now to invite Commissioner Claire Duda to the podium, who is now president of the Douglas County Board. Claire? Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. In addition to serving as the chair of the Douglas County Board, I'm also the vice chair of the Building Commission, and I'm here representing both entities. I want to start by commending our Douglas County Health Department, Dr. Poor, Carol Allensworth, and all the staff for their incredible response to the COVID-19. They are working around the clock to keep our community safe. Overseeing the well-being of more than half a million people in eastern Nebraska is no easy task, and our county health department takes that on with great seriousness. 
As you know, the situation remains fluid and we are evaluating it 24-7 to ensure that the public stays informed. As of yesterday, Tuesday morning, we have suspended visitation at the Douglas County Health Center until further notice. We recognize the hardship this may cause residents and their families, but it is a necessary step to protect our long-term care and hospice residents who are considered high risk for COVID-19. We're also implementing visitor screening procedures at the Douglas County Youth Center, the Community Mental Health Center, and general assistance. Our county jail already has video visitation in place, and we're looking into the possibility of having all visitation conducted online if necessary. Within Douglas County government, each of our departments and elected offices maintains a continuity of operations plan. Department directors and elected officials have been reviewing these plans and updating them as necessary to prepare for the possibility of an outbreak of COVID-19. We are confident that our departments and offices will be able to properly respond should such an outbreak occur. We also have the ability to have employees work from home in departments where it is feasible and prudent to do so. In our 24-hour operations, such as 911 and the County Department of Corrections, we have the ability to call in staff from other shifts when necessary, should there be a staffing shortage due to an outbreak. I'm joined here today by several Douglas County elected officials, the election commissioner, and department directors who can answer any questions more directly that you may have specific to their operations should an outbreak occur. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Many have questions about public events coming up and how or if those events will be canceled or postponed. By state statute, the governor and the local public health <coughs> officials have the authority to order closings or cancel events. The City of Omaha Municipal Code also gives the mayor authority to act in very limited and extreme circumstances. Chapter 8 applies to disaster preparedness and Chapter 12 applies to health and sanitation. These sections could apply if a threat is extreme, widespread, or deadly. However, state statute gives the greatest authority to the governor and local <laughs> public health officials. A few other important notes. We have many public spaces in this building and in the courthouse. The Building Commission will disinfect the entire complex floor by floor every week in addition to the regular office cleaning. This will continue weekly as long as it is needed. Libraries, community centers, indoor pools, the permits division in the planning department, all city facilities are open at this time. The Convention and Visitors Bureau is in constant contact with meeting and event planners, Omaha hotels and venues, Omaha is still open for business. Secretary of State Bob Evanen called me the other night, Monday evening, and asked me to remind you and to remind everyone that you can request for a primary mail-in ballot anytime up until the 1st of May. He has no plans to cancel the May primary. <clears throat> Douglas County Election Commissioner Brian Cruz is here today and he can answer many of your questions you have about um, uh, that option and deadlines. Communications. Today, we will add a page to both the city and the county website home pages to make information easy to find and very accessible. This page will be updated constantly with new information and resources. Before questions, we open up for questions, two final points. Once again, public health and public safety are our priorities. We will prepare, we will act responsible, but we will not, pa uh, we will not panic. This virus is not life-threatening for at least 97 to 98% of those who become infected with the virus. But this does not mean that we don't need to change our habits. It's an infection with common symptoms from which most people will recover, and we should all take precautions. So with that, I'd like to open it up for questions. I would like you to direct your question. If you have a question for anybody up here, please call their name out so that they could come to the podium before you ask your question. Yeah, so, next week, the NCAA tournament <coughs> is in Omaha. If the NCAA goes ahead and allows fans in the stands, are you still comfortable with that decision? Um, you know what? I probably would like to have either Roger Dixon or Diane address that because it it's, would happen at Mecca. Um, I think right now, at this point in Omaha, 
Um, we, and again, this is not my decision to do this, but we have not seen the community spread. Um, all of the, the people that have been diagnosed in Omaha so far have contacted the, the virus by travel. Um, the one <coughs> issue with the young woman that was traveling, of course her family, uh, her father and another family member um, have the virus now, but they were in close quarters at home. Um, if, uh, open events like that, um, right now we have not made any plans to shut them <coughs> down. Uh, we feel like if people are ill or people have any he hesitation about it, they shouldn't come. That's, that's kind of our position right now. Do you want to add anything to your events at Mecca or at, at CHI? We're in contact with the NCAA. They have a committee that they have put together of university and medical personnel. They're monitoring the system, the situation across the, the city. As of this morning, we plan on going ahead with the first and second round that will arrive in our city on the 20th of, of next week. So it, right now it's on. What would be the financial implications if fans were not allowed in? How much would it cost Mecca? What, it's not just Mecca, it's the community as a whole. <laughs> it's, you know, the hospitality industry is the third largest industry in the state. So if fans aren't allowed in, they're not going to stay in hotels either. They're not going to visit restaurants. It's, it would be a huge impact. Does Mecca have insurance or something like that? We do not. Mm -hmm. Mayor, part of the precautions are stay out of big crowds, but yet Mecca is, uh, the NCAA will going to be here. We have a St. Patrick's Day parade this weekend and other events. Isn't that a mixed signal? Stay out of your crowds, but we've got all these big events going on? You know, right now we are learning more and more about, about this virus. Um, as with the common flu virus um, that is, is spread by droplet, by close contact, and by contaminated services, surfaces, we always are recommending that people take precautions if they are sick or ill. The thing of it is right now we don't understand a lot about the spread except it is spread by droplet and contaminated surfaces. And so there has been very few cases here in Omaha so far. Um, we feel like people are smart. We feel like people will be responsible and people will listen to the advice and the recommendations from the Douglas County Health Department. If you're sick, stay at home. Use those common sense precautions if you're out in public like your mom used to say. Um, especially don't touch your face, don't, don't touch people, don't get close. These, these things are the important things to remember right now with this and with any other flu or communicable disease. So we will always, multiple times during the day, keep in contact with Douglas County Health, with HHS, the state of Nebraska, the <coughs> CDC, and we will follow every recommendation they make. But right now, there is no, by Douglas County Health, and they would make that decision, there are no quarantine orders <coughs> right now in Douglas County. They have not made that decision or recommendation yet. All of these quarantines so far are people that have self-quarantined themselves. Mayor, uh, with four patients now, it appears controlled. Is there a threshold or a number you've been told or the health department's been told that makes it a community spreader outbreak to make these extreme decisions? Dr. Poor has told me that right now there is no trigger that has been established. So just kind of on a case-by-case -case basis, or how many we get? Just, I think, uh, Carol, if you want to mention anything else, or do you have anything else to add to that? But I think right now, with, with the way that we are monitoring the spread, um, there, there really is no trigger right now. We're not seeing a, a widespread community spread of the virus. We're seeing it <clears throat> all travel-related so far. But this is so, this is changing, and it changes every day. It's kind of like the CDC is saying, this is the advice of the day, because it changes rapidly as we learn more about the virus and more about the spread of this. Did you want to add anything? No, I think you covered it. Okay. <laughs> well, there's that old nurse of, of background of mine right there. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts about canceling any of the you know, upcoming activities like the uh, parade, St. Patrick's Day? You know, again, um, a lot of that is not under my authority. Um, Douglas, we, again, we will follow. Douglas County Health Department is the ultimate authority in this. Um, as we said before, the city charter gives me some authority in extreme cases, but the city charter was basically, it was written looking about, talking about nat nat or natural disasters, like a tornado that would hit Omaha right now. Um, things that are under my control would be, say, libraries, community centers, things like that. Um, but right now, we are just waiting for more recommendations as we learn more about the spread in this community. What about test kits? Are there enough?
stuck? Do we have them? How do you get them? Where do you go? And, and I know the testing has been, um, the, the availability of kits has been slow in the beginning. Um, there are more and more availability of it, according to the Med Center, um, than there was in the beginning. Do you want to say something, Carol, about that? You know, the, the only thing I'd like to add right there is that we at the Douglas County Health Department, in the course of our investigations, have not had a problem getting individuals tested who needed to be tested. Mm -hmm. But what do you recommend? I mean, you know, I'm sure you're getting, you have 385 phone calls since Monday. If somebody feels they really need to get tested, is there a clinic to go to? Like, can you go through the process of, I want to get tested, what do I do? And who pays for it? Yeah, you know, I think it's just like I talked about earlier today, mm -hmm. our metro area healthcare coalition, that includes all of the major health systems here. They have been meeting together. They have been putting together things like um, triage forms on their websites, you know, call in triage for people and they're asking them questions. So they're assisting in really taking a look at individuals mm -hmm. and determining whether they're at risk for coronavirus and then putting them into the system for testing if need be. Mm -hmm. Right, right now the recommendations are that if you feel ill and you have a concern, call your own doctor, call them from home, tell them your symptoms. It's most likely your doctor will test you for the flu first, and that's a nasal swab. If that, that result is negative and those tests come back within about 30 minutes, then it could be that your doctor will recommend you get tested for coronavirus. The thing we want to make very clear is we don't want anybody with the sniffles or a cold to run into the ER or to run into a public space. Call your own doctor first until we give you, in, until that changes or we give you different information. But don't everybody go running into the ER feel confident you have enough test kits if it gets to that point? Well, we, it's, the test kits don't come from the city of Omaha, but wow. I, I'm in constant contact with Dr. Gold at the Med Center, too, where the biocontainment unit is, and they said that uh, last week they were testing about 100 a day. They felt very confident by the end of this week they could test thousands a day. So it, you know, it just depends on, on um, how many kits they get, but they feel very confident that they will have enough. 100 a day locally are being tested? They said they had the ability oh. like a week ago. But they are getting more. Now remember, the first patients that were coming over, they were serum tests, they were blood tests. Now it's a nasal test, just like you get tested with the, with the regular flu. What's the city's capacity to enforce a quarantine, either a self-quarantine or if it progressed beyond that? A, a quarantine order would come from Douglas County Health Department, not the city of Omaha. And how is that enforced? How is that enforced? Carol, you want to? You just might as well stay here. <laughs> yeah. We are not putting out mandatory orders of quarantine right now or mandatory orders of isolation. It is our law enforcement partners that would actually work with us on assuring that a mandatory order would be enforced. But, you know, people, um, you know, we want to use the least restrictive method when we're trying to keep people safe. And I'm telling you that the people that we are working with are more than happy to go along with our recommendations. So that's kind of where we're sitting right now. How many people uh, have been tested in Omaha and Douglas County? In Omaha and Douglas County. Well, I can tell you from our perspective, we've probably had about 30 that have been tested through our investigations, but that's, there's much more across the city that have been tested. So I don't have an, ex, uh, an actual number for you at this time. Okay, can you tell us who what? pays for the testing? <clears throat> Is the patient bill for that, or how does that work? At this point in time, if I understand correctly, most of the, if it goes through the Nebraska Public Health Lab, that is covered by public health funds. Now that more and more tests are becoming available through um, other sectors, you know, through big laboratories and stuff, it's very likely that those tests at that point in time would go to their insurance. Have the only voluntary quarantine uh, that have been issued or self quarantines for people who have uh, tested positive or uh, suspected have been exposed. Say that again. 
So there's no general quarantine, no, no. mandatory or voluntary. No. But, pe but are the only quarantines for the people who have tested positive or <clears throat> been exposed and they're self-quarantined? Yes. Yes, and so <clears throat> those that are sick are self-isolated because they have symptoms. Those that we know have been exposed are self-quarantined. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're uh, hearing from <clears throat> school districts that there's this threshold of 1% of people in the region or two people with community spread not traceable to travel or, or some other issue. Is, is that, the, is that <clears throat> a threshold? No, we don't have, I, no. We don't have a, like I said before, there is no trigger or threshold right now. Um, you know, 1% of our general population here is a lot of people. I mean, you're talking 5,000 people. So, um, you know, I don't think we want to wait until there's 5,000 people that have been diagnosed and infected. The thing of it is that it's very important, though, and I think we all know this, but it's important to repeat that it, with the CDC, um, saying that 97 to up to maybe 99 percent of the people infected will have very mild cases. Much of it will be untested and undiagnosed because it will be so mild. There is a small portion that will may, and they, uh, that will be more serious, and those are respiratory uh, conditions that they could get pneumonia that could cause it to be more deadly. Um, they still say that the mortality of coronavirus is still very low. It's about five times what regular flu is, but regular flu is 0.1% mortality. They're saying mortality from coronavirus is about 0.5%. So that's five times higher, but that's still very, very low. And so I know that I, the thing that's important is to reassure people too. You know, you are in good hands in Omaha, Nebraska. With the expertise we have with the Douglas County Health Department, with UNMC, with the experts in the biocontainment uh, lab that we have there, um, with our, um, with our um, unit that we have in the new IXL building for, um, for watching the patients for a while, for containing them, you couldn't have better people in this city that are not only wanting to treat and take care of the patients that are infected, but also to take care of the community. When the Ebola patients came here, they were infected and they were very, very ill. And they did an excellent job at UNMC, and no one in the community was infected. I will say our Omaha Fire Department pretty much wrote the book on how to transport patients with infectious and communicable diseases. And so we are very well prepared. This is something new. It evolves different every day. And every bit of the information that we get, um, we want to update the, the community with that information and keep you updated. It's dynamic. It's changing. As we learn more and as we learn more about the virus, um, some of these plans can change. But I want to let everyone know we are well prepared. We've got all of these experts working on this right now. And for people to be responsible, but not panic about it, because Mayor, most of the cases will be mild. Mayor, if there's no number that triggers these larger decisions, what's the final straw? Well, you know, again, the, the decision, the ultimate decision lies with Douglas County Health Department and with the governor, with the state of Nebraska and HHS. So that's where the ultimate decision, they are working with the CDC, with the health department, with the experts, with epidemiology and infectious disease. They are all working together to determine what that is. And so right now, our spread in Omaha is very low. We have very few patients that have actually been diagnosed, and so there is no reason to panic at this time. But when we know more about the disease and, and we, we can see how the spread is, what's happening with it, how quick it's happening, I think then some other decisions, including what that trigger is, will be determined. Mayor, you mentioned the governor numerous times. Have you contacted him and asked him or requested that uh, he consider canceling some of these events? I have talked to the governor numerous times about it. I've talked to Dr. Gold, the chancellor at, at uh, UNMC. Um, we've been in constant contact with Douglas County Health. Um, you know, right now, everybody is working together, and that's the important thing. We want to all be on the same page with all the same current information and being able to make these decisions. No, I have not called the governor and asked him to cancel, shut down the city. I don't think that's warranted yet. I think what is really warranted right now is for people to be careful and responsible, and that's the message that we have out now. Now, if he makes that decision, you know, then it will be discussed. It may come out as a recommendation 
recommendation. I don't know, but we don't have it at this time. But there's a difference between shutting down the city and canceling the St. Patrick's Day parade, isn't there? Yeah, but again, that's not my call. It's not my authority to do that. And so I think, you know, if, if we've already been in contact with those who are uh, organizing the parade, um, called them as of yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, they said the parade was still on. That could change next hour. So, you know, we just have to really kind of let this play out a little bit, but be very, very cautious while we move forward. Mayor, what, is your reaction, what, no. what is your reaction to the, um, the, the status that was given by UNMC and the Med Center yes, yesterday at the legislature with putting out these numbers of possibility to prepare for 480,000 deaths and those high numbers? Did you see that report yesterday that was put out by, to, by UNMC to lawmakers? In, in no, I didn't see anything like that. Yeah, they put out hmm? a report predicting, the statistics predicts up to 96 million cases in the U.S. Of those, 1.9 million people could require admission to an intensive care unit. <clears throat> Many of those would be elderly and of 480,000 deaths if no one takes any precautions. Well, well, again, keep in mind, more people have died from the common flu than from coronavirus. And so these are just predictions right now. You know, the, the, the prediction that I read just recently from the CDC said that um, they think approximately 30 percent of people in this country might get infected with that disease, but they think 98 percent will be mild and maybe undiagnosed. So the, and, and only that 0.5 percent mortality. So that's what we have been told. So I don't know about your figures or where you got them or where they came from. That was from, that was from the UNMC. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I didn't know the lawmakers were experts on on no, spread of coronavirus. From UNMC, not okay. Lawmakers. All right. UNMC was the I don't know. Chief Smart. Mm -hmm. Sure. Your officers wind up at a variety of events, for lack of a better word. When do they decide to gear up with this protective equipment? Well, good morning, Joe. First of all. <laughs> good morning, Chief. Uh, when we're talking about what we're dealing with, the COVID-19, part of this is a progression, Joe. Right now, we're not at the point <clears throat> where we want to panic everybody. The question is, do we monitor it? Does it continue to grow and spread? If it does, we make adjustments along the way. So as, as chief of police, we're prepared to make those adjustments if the COVID-19 virus continues to spread. So the planning phase has been in place for months. It continues and it's an ongoing decision basis. So many of the questions are, are caught up in that progression. <clears throat> And let me go back to your question, when do they don emergency protective equipment? If it depends on what level of equipment they need, if they're arresting somebody, they'll probably have gloves on. If they're transporting or come into contact with somebody or have information from 911 that the person is coughing or hacking or something of that nature, because 911 is prepared to give those warnings out to us, they may put a mask on, they put gloves on, they'll take a little extra precautions. It's case by case right now as we watch this progression and see where it goes. As far as the planning phase goes for all the leaders in here today, we plan not only for today, but plan for worst case scenarios as well. That's what the community is asking us to do. We're nowhere near that worst case scenario. We're the very uh, embryonic stage of this, I would say. And we will monitor it daily to see where it goes. The law enforcement will adjust our our procedures and tactics along the way on a, on a case by case basis, but also on the progression basis. Chief, if someone requested a test or is maybe in custody or is going to jail, do you know what the opportunities are for inmates or people in custody to, uh, to get tested? Uh, our corrections director is here. Um, would you like to take that, Mr. Myers? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Mike Myers, the Director of Corrections for Douglas County. Um, we, are, we are continuing a practice that we began when we had an influenza outbreak in the jail uh, last December. Um, all inmates are having their temperatures checked in our pre-book area. Um, we have added uh, screening questions for COVID-19. Uh, if we have somebody who does have a fever that crosses the threshold and has additional symptoms consistent with the coronavirus, we will then have an immediate call to the Douglas County Health Department to get direction on what we should do with this individual. We will um, attempt to, if the, if the individual is cooperative, we will place the individual in a mask. 
um, we will offer if the if the police department or other arresting agency is not already wearing their protective gear we will offer that to them immediately as well would they be wearing masks going to court things like this too if there's something uh, if they were um, there's a lot of open questions about court transports and so forth when, um, if we have people who are suspected or confirmed cases um, there are ongoing discussions with our criminal justice partners um, with with the presiding judges the, the county attorney uh, the public defender and city prosecutor uh, we are working out those details uh, this week actually Chief Olson. Uh, we've all seen how the um, how your first responders have been protected with the Ebola situation um, is that exactly how you're doing it with COVID-19 are they do they look the same wear the same outfits because we have all that we've seen them and how they're protected is that the same for COVID-19 uh, good morning Michelle um, I explained that in my in my uh, opening um, we're following CDC recommendations for the personal protection equipment levels and for low-risk patients I mentioned that we're wearing gloves goggles and masks for high-risk patients we're wearing gloves goggles masks and gowns but the way that we see them with the Ebola is that how they look with the COVID-19 yes yeah, exactly. yes, so do yes. They, and keep in mind keep in mind we wear that personal protective equipment every day in the field and we've had long-standing policies and protocols that mandate that usage so we're very comfortable that our, our firefighters are you know they're used to donning that equipment we've had it in our cache of equipment uh, we have stockpiles of that equipment uh, we've distributed that equipment and continue to do that it's, it's really one of our routine practices have any of the first responder first responders who transported the patients been self-quarantined or had symptoms or do they get tested how does that work after a transport actually we did have one firefighter that has been tested for COVID-19 and that test came back negative keep in mind that that firefighter was wearing the appropriate level of uh, personal protective equipment so it did its job in that case Who's he in contact with? <clears throat> uh, he's one of the firefighters that transported a patient from the airport and once again, when, when we wear the appropriate levels of protection, our firefighters are safe. The CDC is telling us that if, if we follow their direction and our longstanding policy and protocol, that the risk to the firefighters themselves at the scene of an emergency is low. Mm -hmm. Could Ms. Ellsworth please directly address this, this threshold question of 1% in the region or people because that's something that we've been uh, persistently hearing uh, from school officials I think the best thing to say is there are numerous discussions going on at the state and local level about what's going to trigger the shutdown of a number of things I can tell you right now that dr. poor is in twice weekly contact with the school superintendents so they're all working through that together. And I think I can safely say that any, sh any shutdown that the health department might recommend would not be done in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would do that in coordination with our partners. Is there a specific definition of a community or a region when you're talking about community spread? <clears throat> you know, some people are calling a region maybe douglas county maybe the omaha metro area we are not really using a definition such as that we are looking at our whole community and seeing if we're seeing community spread ongoing that's not related to a known risk mm -hmm. keep in mind too that with with flu every year we have flu season we know that and, and it ramps up and then usually in the warmer weather and in the summer uh, we see less and less cases and it ramps up again um, it could happen the same with with corona with this COVID-19 um, currently the UNMC is doing clinical trials with an antiviral drug right now there is no antiviral drug on the market that we have that works against COVID-19 but they are doing clinical trials at the med center right now typically to develop a vaccine that can be used like we have a flu vaccine now takes about 12 to 18 months typically 
They are recommending CDC that if you haven't had a regular flu shot to go ahead and get it because although it doesn't seem effective on COVID-19, it perhaps could make, if you, cont uh, if you contract the, the virus, um, less severe. And so they are recommending that people still go out if you haven't and get the traditional flu shots that are out on the market right now. Dr. Ellenberg? Another going, doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> going, I'm sorry, but um, going back to this issue of the schools, the schools could close without the health department. Yes. Go ahead, though, right? Yes. Yes, they have the authority to do that. But I think all of the schools, all of the superintendents, along with public health, you know, want to get together and have a consistent message. And that's what they're doing through these regular meetings mm -hmm. that they are currently having. Mm -hmm. And I just want to let you know, I, I, I'm in contact with the superintendents. I talked with Dr. Logan just this morning. So, you know, they are trying, they're on, OPS is on spring break right now. They're trying to make a determination of what they would do next or if they would cancel school, say, for another week. So we are in contact with them, and this is just, it's so dynamic and evolving, and it changes every day. It's kind of, it's, like I said before, it's kind of like the advice of the day. It could change tomorrow and be different. Did they give you any indication when that decision on OPS would be coming? Um, it could be as early as today. When do you want people to call the hotline or call their doctor? Doctor. Do, we, do, we, do, we, do they call their doctor or do you call the hotline? I mean, we've got the hotline set up, but then you know, there's all these different places to call. So just yes. one central. The Douglas County Health Department information line for coronavirus is meant for general public questions. It's not meant for accessing care. The hotlines and the triage lines that are being implemented by our healthcare coalition partners, by the health systems, those are the ones, you know, you need to call your doctor if you think you're sick or have been exposed. They will either, you know, direct you to one of those hotlines, direct you to the triage line, but you should be calling health care if you need health care. If you want information about coronavirus, general public information, then that one can go to the 444-3400 coronavirus information line. Mm -hmm. But you should be accessing medical care if you're sick. Mm -hmm. And like my communication director said earlier, that we will have a new um, page on our homepage, City of Omaha, and also Douglas County's homepage that we will update continuously with any new information that we get and also contact information and to answer questions. Mr. Dixon? When and how do you expect to know from the any minute it could be today it could be tomorrow we don't know as I said there there's a committee they're monitoring the situation and it could go off where we don't have anything because conference play starts and, and they get through the conference with no issues it's just anybody's guess do you know if it's going to be, you know, what the NCAA will do? If it's like if they decide to have, you know, fans at one side or another side, or is it just kind of up to the NCAA? Well, if they're going to do with fans, it'll be with fans. They won't will say. That be with all, will, will that be with, with all sites with all fans, or will it be site by site? Can't answer that one. I know that okay. Division Three basketball started with no fans but as of this morning all first and second in division one play will be with fans i've heard nothing other than that mm -hmm. roger have you lost any conventions or meetings that they've canceled or was it you were negotiations with to bring in uh, have dropped off those negotiations because of the virus on the negotiating side no uh we've got seven conventions that we're in discussion with are either moving or talking about canceling. We've had one small meeting cancel. Other than that, we've had the uh, Creighton Baseball with uh, Central Connecticut. They canceled because of their regulations on traveling. So uh, 
Creighton will be down three games for this weekend unless they can find somebody else to come in and play, which they could that could happen. Mm -hmm. Are you making any special plans for like immediate upcoming events, Blake Shelton on Thursday and the Lumineers on Saturday? Well, there's going to be a lot of subtle changes that you're going to see. It's how we serve concession items, how, you know, the workers being with, with gloves on, coming in the facility, uh, you'll go through the metal detectors. If there's a, a search of that person, it will be with gloves on. Cleaning has stepped up dramatically and will continue to do so. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll just let you know that Monday night I received a call from Warren Buffett. And, you know, he just, he said that uh, he's a very responsible person and public safety is a priority for him. But with Berkshire Hathaway coming the 1st of May, he said his preference is to, to wait till a month out, wait till the 1st of April and evaluate, see what the recommendations are at that time and then make a decision then. So everybody is concerned. Everybody that's involved with a public event is concerned. But I think uh, most people are taking the position, let's wait and see what happens, let's wait and see what else we find out about the spread, and let's make responsible decisions. Mayor, what about the financial hit of the city? I mean, if, if people don't go out as much, yeah. if they don't you know, come to these events, I mean, even if they go on, they make the problem they do a lot less rather than that. They, and there is no doubt the financial impact on the city could be huge. I mean, really huge, and it could change the way the city of Omaha does business for a long, long time. Because a lot of those big events bring multiples of millions of dollars into the city every year. You know, we're talking about all the events that we have here and all that are scheduled for this summer. So um, it could have a huge financial impact on the city, and we know that if everything was shut down. It, it depends on the period of time also it's shut down. You know, if things are recommended to be shut down for two weeks, for a month, we just don't know. But all of that will play into what the financial impact would be. But if we start shutting down major events, uh, hotels, public events in public spaces, things like that, it could definitely, it definitely would, not could, it would have a huge financial impact on the city. And we know that. Mayor, you mentioned the Unified Command, the Health Department's leading that just started. Who's on that? What can it do and why is it so Here we go again. <laughs> Glad you're here today. Yes, we have implemented Unified Command and we've been working with Paul Johnson, who is our Douglas County Emergency Manager. But when we pull in Unified Command in a disease situation, the health director is generally the chair of that. And what we're doing is we are pulling in city and county partners who are involved in this response so that we can work together to assure that all pieces of the response are coordinated and addressed. So it would include law enforcement, it includes fire, it includes EMS, it includes um, PIO representation from both city and county and, and also the health department. It includes Douglas County Emergency Management. We even have the county attorneys on that particular unified command. And Paul, are you here? Am I missing anybody? Am I missing anybody? You, you no, know, the airport mm -hmm. authority. I'll let you talk. Introduce yourself. Paul Johnson, uh, director of the Douglas County Emergency Management Agency. Uh, other members of that unified command are uh, the Douglas <coughs> County Sheriff's <coughs> Office and the uh, <coughs> Omaha Airport Authority. And uh, they attended the meetings <coughs> yesterday and uh, was extensive. And uh, the initial uh, practice of the unified command is to establish uh, continuity and uniformity in the response. And we are uh, actually chaired by uh, Audie Poor with the Douglas County Health Department. And so we, we stand ready to uh, act as this thing progresses. Can you talk about what's happening at the airport? What, what the airport authorities doing? Uh, I should probably let the airport authorities speak on behalf of the airport, but I can tell you what was shared a little bit is that they, they had, um, they've established common practices that they will uh, utilize there at the airport. And uh, 
I think the other law enforcement departments uh, were on board with that, and uh, so it felt consistent across the board. What's common practices? Common practices is how uh, the, when the airline, when the air, aircraft comes in, um, the, if they have uh, a passenger on the airplane that they're concerned about, their response practice that they will utilize. Okay, I'm not sick, that coughing fit. I choked on my own spit, I think, there for a minute. But That's what they all say. Yeah. All of a sudden, wrong time for that to happen. But We're all six feet away. We're okay. Keep in mind with this unified command, too, you know, this is new territory we're, we're talking about now. Because most of the time when that unified command was assembled, it was because of a flood, it was because of a tornado, it was because of a bad storm. So the, the, the threat of a pandemic is something that we really haven't dealt with that much. So again, it, it, it's, it's ever changing, it's very dynamic, but we do have experts that are all involved in getting current accurate information multiple times during the day. And we will adjust as needed. <clears throat> I know it's getting hot in here. We'll take a few more questions. <laughs> That's a surprise. Well, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. <clears throat> well, we are working to answer your questions about COVID-19. Check KETV.com and the KETV mobile app for the latest news, plus links to resources you can use to find out more about the virus and its impact. We're back here at noon with the latest.